The following program is brought to you by the University of Maine Upward Bound Math Science Program, providing students with the tools they need to succeed since 1991. SSI, Maine Sustainability Solutions Initiative, and in part by the National Science Foundation through their EPSCORE program. EPSCORE. Christine Hoffman is a wildlife biologist at the University of Maine. Currently, she is looking for a new trap to help her with the capture of the blue-spotted salamanders. We're first given this, uh, this task. Christine approached us with a bunch of problems that she needed us to work with. One of them was she only had a $600 budget. The problem was that the traps were really bulky and heavy, some of them that she was using. So she wanted it to be easier to transport and not take up as much space. Uh, the third task that she was facing was she needed to check the traps every four to eight hours because that's how long it takes for a salamander to hold its breath underwater. And the traps that she was using didn't allow them to go up and get air, so it was a danger to the salamanders. With the salamanders that are collected, Christine can research these species where they are soon to become endangered. Christine wants to collect data on their breeding habitats and compare them with the unisexual imitation salamander. To begin our trap, we made a 3D model in Google SketchUp. This was used as a rough idea of what we wanted and allowed us to experiment a little bit. Once the model was finished, we started looking online for materials. Home Depot was our first stop. For the skeleton of the trap, we used a tomato cage because it was relatively inexpensive and would save us the time from having to make a skeleton ourselves. This also made the traps easily stackable. Next, we looked at several different mesh options and decided to go with fiberglass window screen. Not only is it fairly durable, but it's weather resistant and will hold up for several years in the conditions it is going to have to endure. Finally, we decided to buy some 20 gauge wire to help make the trap a little more structurally sound in areas like where the funnels were going to be attached. We still needed a few products to make the trap a reality, which we sourced from several local retailers. Fishing line was purchased at a local department store and would be used to sew the mesh onto the skeleton and several zip ties were borrowed from another group. At this point, we still needed some cones so we scrounged up a couple of bottles. Once we had gathered all the materials, construction began. The mesh was cut to cover the tomato cage and was then sewn into place, leaving the top and bottom open. Next, using three pieces of the 20 gauge wire twisted together, a frame was made to fit the bottom of the trap. This was covered in mesh and attached via zip ties to the main skeleton. Then came the cones. We needed the cones to be removable, stackable, and fairly sturdy. We used several Gatorade bottle caps to attach the cones to the mesh, and then glued larger soda bottle pieces to those to make the cone parts. And after sewing on the top part, the trap is complete. like model of our salamander trap. Um, it's a looks like model because we didn't get to test it, 
So it, it still could not be completely finished. I mean, we might have to add a few things and tweak it a little bit. But this is what we have so far. It solves the problem of the cage being killing the salamanders when they try to catch them by being taller than most vernal pools as the average vernal pool is three feet tall in this cage it's also that height meaning that the salamanders will be able to breathe when it is put in the water and when they're captured inside. This final product is unique because we decided to use a tomato cage for the frame. Um, we found that this was a very interesting idea to do because our frame was already made for us so then all we had to do was attach the screen. Also the sewing pieces instead of using clips this is much more this is much more sustainable than the clips because this won't break off as easy and it will last a long time as this this fishing line isn't degradable in water. This is very important as it will catch them without harming them and so now we can increase our studies on these blue spotted salamanders and truly understand how they live in these vernal pools. Our trap is safe for the environment because it's made out of galvanized steel which won't rust. And the fiberglass mesh won't deteriorate. Our trap was very cost efficient and came in at just under $6. Our trap is also easy to transport and very lightweight. They're stackable and the funnels are detachable. And most importantly, our trap allows the salamanders to breathe. The top of the trap sticks up just above the water, so the salamanders can't escape, but they can still get there. There are a few changes that need to be made to be made for future traps. Um, one of them was that the hot glue we used dripped a lot, so we want to use a silicone base aquarium glue that would work a lot better. Um, the other thing that we want to change is that when making the covering of mesh for the cage, we'd want to first make a pattern to cut it out because we were just cutting it and on the cage and that was making it very horrible. It wasn't working. So what are your thoughts on the uh, on this video? Do you really want my honest opinion about that? No you don't. No you don't. I'd get class A for my opinion. <laughs> Why are you like shooting right I'm there? not. Up here. <laughs> I'm so this will be what the... <laughs> and this will be... Hi Hendrik. Hi Joey. <laughs> See, he introduced me. Yeah. <laughs> so is that like spaghetti or is that pasta? Is pasta spaghetti? <laughs> I get stressed, and this is stressful, and migraines. And how do you feel about the project? <laughs> awesome, awesome, just fabulous. It's a bug net. This is our salamander trap. It's pretty. It's pretty cozy, actually. Um, it, if you rub your nose against it, does it cut your nose? No, okay. it's really soft, actually. <laughs> It's raining. <laughs> I'm recording, so I don't sign up. Thanks. All right.